photography. photography business can be a lonely, emotional, and challenging thing to do. I felt for literally the longest time like I was just going in circles and circles and circles with my approach to growing my photography business. It got to the point where I was wondering, do I just suck at photography? After a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, I finally figured out some of the steps that I needed to take to finally scale and grow my photography business. So I want to save you a ton of time, save you some of those blood, sweat, and tears, and get you on the fast track to scaling your photography business. I'm Ryan Richardson. I'm an adventure photographer and co-founder of Life Outside. I make these videos because we love what we do here and we want you to do what you love as well. So without further ado, let's jump into the nine essentials for growing your photography business. Number one, the first essential is investing in yourself. Knowledge is so critical in growing your photography business to grow your knowledge before you can grow anything. So you gotta invest in yourself before you invest in tools, before you invest in your business, before you do anything because your business can't grow without you. Therefore, you have to focus on you. And once you're finally armed with that knowledge, then you can grow yourself, but then you can also implement that in your business and help your business grow. So that's the most important thing. All right, number two, the second essential is investing in your kit. Once you've invested in yourself, you gotta invest in your business now. So you have to grow the value of what you can offer your clients and future clients. And the best way to do that is upgrade your system. So once you have things that are more valuable to the open market, then you have things that are more valuable to your clients. The more you're able to offer, the more you're able to charge, the more you're able to grow that business. So this is super important. You can't go out and charge $10,000 shooting on your iPhone. I mean, some people can, and that's awesome for them. But for the most part, you're gonna need to invest in tools that really optimize and show off the quality of your work. All right, the third essential is video. Video is so important, whether you're implementing it in your own business to be used as marketing, uh, branding, or offer it to your clients. So even if you don't love video, if you're a photographer through and through and you don't want to deal with the hassle of video, you don't want to upgrade all your equipment, you don't want to do everything that it takes to get into the video service uh, industry, that's okay. Then, you know, look at partnering with people that do offer video. Like, are there people in your, your network that you can partner with that offer video? At least you're able to offer that as a service because at the end of the day, if your clients need video and you don't offer it, they're gonna find it somewhere else. All right, number four is CRM. So why CRM number four? Why we think it's really important to have like a client ecosystem, right? So first of all, you gotta know how much it costs to get a client, right? Because once you have a client, if you look at like your ad spend, if it's not ad spend, like how much energy does it take to actually acquire that client? Because at the end of the day, like time and energy also converts to money because that's something else that you can be doing to be providing value in your business or value to your customers. So every customer or every acquisition of a customer has a cost associated to it, even if you're not spending any money in ad spend to acquire that customer. I hope that makes sense. But regardless, you have to know the, the value of acquiring a client because if you know the value of what it takes to get a client, you're gonna know how important it is to hang on to that client. So what's the best way to hang on to that client? Well, if you wanna offer new ideas to them, you wanna have them in your newsletter, you, you wanna be able to introduce them to new products as they come along, show them other pro projects that you're working on so that they can appreciate uh, maybe this new thing that you're doing, this value that you provide to another client. Whatever it is, you need them in your ecosystem all the time. The best way to do that is through a strong CRM program. I use ClickFunnels right now, but there's tons of great ones out there like Kartra, there's MailChimp. I'm, I'm sure there's other ones. I don't know of all of them. Tons of them have like 30 day free trials. All right, the fifth essential, number five is networking. Networking is so important. At the end of the day, people buy from who they know. So if they don't know you, they're not gonna buy from you. This is a really, really hard lesson that I learned uh, er, kind of early on. But once I realized that, it completely changed my thinking moving forward because it was like, I need to know as many people as possible because people will not purchase from me and I will not be able to provide value to them if I don't know them. So I was like, I, ha I have to just start to know a lot more people I need to get out there. The best way to do that is through networking. So. You know, you can look at some networking social apps. It's a great place to start and kind of just get yourself out there, LinkedIn, things like that. But actually in the real world, in the, in the real space, just go to events and actually put yourself out there. And I know a lot of photographers and creatives can be introverted and that's okay. A lot of people are, and you just have to appreciate that a ton of people in your industry are also uncomfortable with this. This doesn't come natural to a lot of people. Your success is just on the other side of that discomfort. Number six, the sixth essential here is marketing, branding, and everything that falls underneath that umbrella, which I wanna to touch on advertising real quick here. So, so advertising is basically a part of the direct marketing side. This is really important where I wanna make the distinction is that you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money on advertising. I've had really good experience with Kijiji, for example. So Kijiji just being like almost like a Craigslist, right? Where you get to post your service, it's free. I've never put any money behind it. And I get, you know, sometimes it's, it's just as little as one or two clients a month, but over time that adds up to quite a lot of clients that I get to serve 
can provide value for from a free ad. So it costs nothing. You can put it up for 60 days and every 60 days, I just renew that ad on Kijiji. So, you know, it's free. Why not take advantage of that free advertising platform? Another cheap one would be something like Yellow Pages, which is like a directory where people can go and search and find your business online. Another one is uh, Google My Business. So you can set up a My Business. So th that's an awesome way. These are all cheap ways that you can kind of advertise. So it's like direct marketing, but you don't have to spend a lot of money and resources to do it. So those are some good options I just want to throw out there. Okay, number seven is Blue Ocean Strategy. So this is, I actually recently read a book called Blue Ocean Strategy. In fact, it's right here. So super good book. Uh, I had a lot of really good ideas from that. And I knew I just had to talk about it in this video because the whole concept is to basically provide the most value that you possibly can to really increase your offer as much as possible based off of what your existing customers and your non-customers, so your future clients, if you will, need. So if you think of it from that perspective, then you're increasing the offer as much as possible, but then you're also decreasing your price because you're looking at things different. So it's a, it's a different perspective. The way to do that is through market research. You really have to understand uh, what your competition's doing, what your clients and your future clients, what they really want from you, what's important and what's not, because another way to decrease your overhead is to just cut the things that they don't think that are, are really important. And then you're creating a blue ocean and getting away from that red ocean over here where everyone else is. So you're really creating your own space and your own value and offerings tailored specifically to your existing clients and your future clients. All right, number eight is to collaborate. So I kind of touched on this earlier with the video stuff, like if you didn't want to do video, but you could do this across the board. So try to look at what your clients are doing while they're using your product, what they're doing before they're using your product, what they're doing after, and see if you can provide value in all of those spaces as well. Can you create marketing campaigns? If not, is there someone else that you can team up with that can create campaigns for you, for your clients, so you're able to offer that as a service? Or how about distribution? Where are they putting their money to, to push this ad campaign? If you created a bunch of photo assets that's gonna go out into a marketing campaign and they don't have like a Facebook ad agency, if they don't have a pay-per-click Google ads agency, whatever that looks like, can you provide that service to them as well because the more that you're able to get your hands on from the start to the end of the project that you're kind of in the middle of the more in demand you're going to become because you can have complete overview over every step of the process all right number nine is to generalize if you watch my first video on this series the nine essentials for starting your photography business this is for growing your photography business if you watch the first one you'll recall that i said that you really want to niche down in your market space and then you can kind of eventually generalize a bit so this is the point once you really scale and you're, you're you have more offerings you're collaborating with people you have much more clients in different areas you have a bigger portfolio with more work to show for in kind of different industries or maybe not even industries but just niches inside of that industry the more you can generalize so this is where you can now kind of step back and open yourself up and kind of make yourself available for more work more opportunity out there so don't be afraid to kind of spread your wings get away from the thing that you kind of mastered and perfected step away from it and see what else you can offer what else you can kind of master and grow and move on from and then just continue to add to your offerings bonus tip this isn't essential but if you apply this to your business this is the one thing that i guarantee you will make your business grow faster than anyone else and that's if you just become obsessed with your clients success so yeah they're hiring you for photography awesome but can you solve problems and what is their version of success like what are their goals the most detrimental thing that you could do in your business is to say that's not my job i'm not interested you say hey you know what? I'm, that's not my job but i'm gonna make it my job and then i'm gonna i'm gonna do it better than everyone else that is where all the money is at i hope that you liked this video i hope that you learned something and if you did please let me know in the comments below i'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the next video